My name is Mike Abin, and welcome to my KSP campaign. I am just heading out here to the Korion 3, which is just minutes away from entering into the moon's sphere of influence. And you might recall last episode, I was bemoaning the fact that I got the wrong scientist aboard. I got Carol aboard here. Last episode, actually, I was saying Chrissy, but Chrissy's on her way to Dres. This is Carol. And Carol's already landed on the moon, and thus will not be getting very much exp or any experience at all from doing this. I would have been better off sending her with the Korion 1 on her way, on, which is now on its way to Minmus. And uh, I was sort of bemoaning this, and then I also realized, like, oh my gosh, these guys don't even have any fuel. There's a lander attached to asteroid Yoi um, that these guys are going to take to the surface of the moon, but that lander has no fuel in it. I have to send out a mission that's going to be putting fuel in it. That's going to take a bit of time because i got some other missions. So they're just going to get here and kind of cool their heels for a little bit. And on top of that, uh, this moon mission is more about doing contracts, not about doing science, while the Minmus mission is about getting to as many biomes as I can and really doing science hauling. And instead of the level 2 Carol going to Minmus, I got the level 1 McNand on his way to Minmus. And I was bemoaning all this, and then it was all of a sudden, you know, Val had enough. She said, you want to go to Minmus? I'll get you to Minmus. We will set this up and get ourselves over to Minmus. Forget the moon. We can redirect ourselves. Well, at least I hope that I can. You can see that I'm coming in. I was going to get a capture in a polar orbit around the moon. That certainly doesn't help the situation. So I need to bring down my inclination and see if we cannot use the moon to redirect our course to Minmus. Now, it might be that Minmus is nowhere near positioned correctly to help us out with this. But you never know. We could be in luck. Certainly would have been better to have done this burn earlier, but quite frankly, I just thought about it just now. And oh, oh, I see some close encounter indicators. Oh, I think they are kind of close together. Oh, I, I should be able to make this work. Oh, for sure. Oh, we got this. All right, ladies and gentlemen. There are some, yes, there are gentlemen on this ship. <laughs> we are on our way to Minmus. Well, not yet, but soon. Anyways, while I continue to finagle this, why don't I talk about this episode? Episode 100. Wow. That's crazy. I think it's more a testament to my craziness than anything else, but still crazy nonetheless. And I would love to say that I have some super impressive, brilliant gameplay and design coming up for this 100th episode, but that doesn't seem to be the way it worked out. No, what? I think the word to describe what's coming up ahead is ugly. <laughs> There's going to be sort of a, just a combination, a, a number of different things that just sort of happened. Well, I should first mention, uh, I do have four ejection burns, four ships that are on our way to either Eve or Moho that I have to perform the ejection burn. So all of those are going to happen this episode. And they all go fine. It's some of these other things um, that uh, you could blame it on me, you could blame it on the game, you can blame it on mods. Uh, likely you can blame it on a combination of all three of those things. Um, but the operative word is ugly, and each time it's a different kind of ugly. So I suppose that in itself is kind of interesting. But uh, why don't we get into finishing off what we're doing here? You can see I ended up with a nice sort of min miss encounter without too much difficulty. So we'll uh, jump ahead to the burn. It's 124 meters per second. Which really isn't bad if you think about it, because a direct route to Minmus straight up is, is 60 meters per second more than a direct route to the moon. So it's not like they're spending more than they would have if they just went straight to Minmus in the first place. Of course, having the right crew on the right ship might have helped a bit, too. Okay, looks like we are getting close here. Got a little bit of a ribbon effect there on that trajectory. That looks kind of weird. Okay. Oh, glitching in and out a little bit more here. Just use RCS to kind of push that in. Oh, we're hitting Minmus. Oh, that's okay. 
you know what, once we're outside of the moon's sphere of influence, once we're past it, we'll uh, do a little bit of a correction burn and correct our trajectory to Minmus. In the meantime, let's see here. Okay, our periapsis is 115 meters per second. So we're just going to be in high space as we go around the moon. So let's see what science we can use. I am getting better at using uh, X science. Uh, specifically, I've been use I was using it before in much the same way as I was using Science Alert, which stopped working with 1.1. But X science has some pretty powerful uh, functionality, most specifically around this this search feature that it has. So I'm just searching here for science that I can collect in high space around the moon, and I can see I got a number of some gravity scans here that I can grab. Oh, I've never done a magnetometer reading in space high above the moon. Oh, might as well get that one out of the way. This one's not biome specific. There we go. Grab that. And then I got out the ScanSat mod and took a look at my biome map and started taking a look at what are some of the biomes that we will be passing over that I can do gravity scans over. And I can see that I'm getting some I mean, there are some little gravity scans I can do, but I'm getting some big hits over the east crater and the east far side crater. Both of those I'm just going to be passing over anyway. So, uh, yeah, we'll collect the science over that stuff. We're over the east crater now, and there's the gravity science from the east crater. And Carol's going to store that in the science lab. And, of course, a little while later, we got the east far side crater. Why don't we cut to the Corian 3 after it has left the moon's sphere of influence. You can see here it's on its way to Minmus. There's the Corian 1 a little bit ahead of us. So we're going to be getting there. We're not going to be catching up, unfortunately, but we'll be getting there not too far after the Corian 1 gets there. And we'll be rejoining both of these vessels as they get into Minmus in a future episode. But right now, well, I have an exodus that's about to begin. This is the Eve 1 falling towards its periapsis where it's going to be performing its ejection burn which should send it on a course towards Eve. And this is going to be the first of four vessels performing ejection burns that you're going to be seeing this episode. And these vessels have received a lot of attention over the past several episodes. So uh, I'm not going to be spending a lot of time with them here other than showing you the requisite beauty shot of it performing its ejection burn, which concluded with this really nice encounter that I got with Eve that you see me here just doing some, some final tweaks to, which unfortunately I realized after completing this that actually I want to put this thing into a polar orbit, so I'll have to be tweaking it again, but I'll wait till I'm outside of Kerbin's sphere of influence for that. That'll be a really tiny little correction. And with one of four done, let's take a look at a probe that'll be staying a little bit closer to home. This is MapSat 7, and it's on its way to try and fulfill a contract to do a resource scan of Kerbin. So it's going into a poor orbit, obviously. This is pretty trivial, really. I'm not even sure why I would want a resource scan of Kerbin. But I mean, who am I to turn down some money? So <laughs> it's going to perform it. But we're not going to spend a whole lot of time with this because obviously this is going to be a not too exciting mission. So we'll just cut here to the final deployment of the resource scanner. There we go. Okay. Perform orbital survey. There we are. And once that is complete, then this contract will be completed. It was that easy. But before we leave here, why don't we take a quick look at map view where you can see both the Kermes 2 and the Kegel 7, which seem to be in a race to periapsis in their respective ejection burns. And it was the Kermes 2 that won that race. If you take a look at the left there, you'll see I have a menu pin. That's a smart part. Specifically, it's the smart part involved for staging when these radial tanks run out. Actually, while I'm thinking about it, why don't I... There it is. That's the tank that's being drained right now. Why don't I monitor that as well? You may recall that uh, 
had a bit of a staging mishap with the predecessor to the Kermes 2, namely the Kermes 1, when it was on its way to Dres that resulted in it dropping two full radial tanks, uh, which has put that mission into some jeopardy. Oh, I'm already achieving an ejection. Excellent. That's why I, ha I have the smart part disabled, because I wanted to make sure that just check here to be sure I'll map you oh yeah we are on our way out of here so now what I'll do is I'll re-enable that smart part and oh see and uh, I was just worried that it would end up dropping those tanks before I'd achieved an ejection so I thought it would be prudent to uh, keep it disabled because I don't want any debris going around Kerbin but now that I'm clearly on an ejection trajectory on our way out of Kerbin's Sphere of Influence. Now I can enable that smart part and when it's ready, there they go. You know what? I don't think that those fuel tanks were quite empty. And it was only upon reviewing this video that I noticed that the smart part, which actually set the stage when the fuel was at 10%, not when the tank was empty. I'm not quite sure what happened there. But I did lose 24 meters per second of delta V. Well, if my fuel rations were that tight, I would be in trouble. So I should be okay. Oh, well, you know, and otherwise, actually, I was really pleased with this ejection. I mean, here I am at uh, main engine cutoff, and I'm just over 300 kilometers above Kerbin's surface, which is so much better compared to when the Kermes 1 ejected when it was... Uh, at least 700 kilometers above the surface at the moment that I did main engine cut off and that's a result of just doing more and shorter of these sort of pre-orbit burns you know doing slowly bringing up my apoapsis I just got better at doing that the more time you spend near curb and surface near periapsis when you're performing these burns the more efficient your ejection is and when you're working with low thrust definitely these sort of little pre-orbits that you do can make quite a bit of difference get Mr. Oberth working for you anyway we'll just make sure here that the water purifier and the carbon extractor are up and going for these folks but then I really didn't have much time to waste because only 25 minutes after the Korion 2, or the Kermes 2, was passing its periapsis. The Kegel 7 had gotten there. Remember, these two were pretty close together. Again, this is my third now ejection burn in this episode. I still got one more coming, so we won't spend any time with it. It went perfectly fine. The Kegel 7 is now also on its way to Minmus, or not Minmus, on its way to Eve. Actually, specifically, it's going to be on its way to Gilly, because that's the plan with this thing, is to explore Gilly's surface. But, why don't we leave this one and get onto a vehicle that we haven't used for a little while. Here we have Wilman Kerman atop the Model K2, which is my little science buggy I use for scrounging up science in around the KSC. I haven't used this for actually quite some time. Before we can get started, Wilman has to do the requisite uh, hooking up of all the science equipment that comes from the surface science pack. And then once that was done, it was time to start scrounging up some science. And once again, I've been using X science to determine what it is that I'm missing and what it is that I can still top up. And one of the things that I noticed was this scorecard science that is attached to this particular golf club. So uh, this golf club coming from Kerbal Inventory System. And I want to, I mean, I think it comes from Kerbal Inventory System. It definitely at least uses Kerbal Inventory System. Maybe it's connected with another odd mod. I don't know, but I want to know how to collect this science. Okay, let's try equipping. Okay, so this is Shell Cal here, my only scientist on the surface. Okay, there's no extra science you can do right-clicking on him. Maybe you have to right-click on the club. Uh, four? Four. Point three science. Wow, a whole point three science for that. That hardly seems worth it. Now, how do I collect it? That just says unequip. Maybe Shalcal now has that science? Nope, there's nothing different here. Okay, let's re-equip the golf club again. Whoa, whoa, Shalcal, don't fall down. Don't fall off. There he goes. Get him back. 
<laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, no, that's still Shell Cal. I'm trying to right click on the club. Here we go. Review data. Yeah, it's still there in the club, but I don't see any way to get it out of the club. So what if I'm going to, I'm going to more biomes. Does that mean they're expecting you just to have multiple sets of clubs with you? <laughs> oh, this hardly seems worth it for 0.3 science each. No, uh, I think, I think, uh, that's cute and all, but I think, uh, I will concentrate on this science that really does pay off for me. So, scrounging around, actually I do have a few places, there's a number of places I've yet to collect gravity science from. Uh, also, there are three new biomes that came up when I upgraded the VAB to level three. Um, one of which is this uh, little memorial to the old Mark I pod. Yeah, a little bit of a testament to the early release days. Actually, that goes way back. And the other thing was this nice big round tank next to the VAB with this cool ladder system that obviously Shell Pal couldn't resist climbing up. There are a few places that are a little bit, little bit awkward, but Shell Cal managed it without too much trouble. Except for the spot right at the top. Let's try this again. Get back on there, Shell Cal. Yeah, it really does. Okay, I'm not going to come this far. Not get right to the top, that's for sure. Come on. No, it really doesn't want me to go up there. Okay, forget it. Let me just climb over the railing. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah. Health and safety be damned. This railing is obviously only a suggestion. Nice. All right, and then of course, once we were done with all of that, it was time to get Shell Cal back down to the surface, back into the buggy. So we'll just sort of get him up to the back here, and oh, oh, come on, come on, Shell Cal, get up. Uh oh, Shell Cal has managed to run himself over, and I can't move him. <laughs> Let's switch to the vehicle and switch back. Wow. <laughs> I just switched to the vehicle and then switched back to him. Ah, freedom! Okay, well. We should be able to just climb up the back here. There we go! And we'll get Shell Cal back in and we'll go around to some of the other biomes and everything was going swimmingly. But all these fun and games ended with a busted wheel when I was uh, trying to get up nice and close to the flagpole by the astronaut complex. And Willman, being only a level 2 engineer, was not able to fix the wheels, so that's it. Mission aborted. We'll recover these folks. But even with that, this 258 science, that's not bad. And with that, I started research on advanced solar tech for the microwave transmitters and receivers that it gives for transmitting electrical power around. With that done, I just want to show you this really quickly, me deorbiting the debris, because, um, well, something has changed recently. This is just the main booster from the Kegel 6, which you saw launch just briefly last episode. I don't even have parachutes on it, so I have no intent of recovering it. And of late, I've been letting Stage Recovery do the recovering for me. Earlier on in this series, I was uh, riding these things down sort of manually, and then but then I got stage recovery working the way I wanted, so I used stage recovery to bring it down. But, um, yeah, well, something a little bit surprising happened here. Yeah, obviously there's been a change in the heating model because uh, I was dropping things from low orbit. This thing only dropped from 80 kilometers. No problem whatsoever. Um, perhaps it's actually, to be honest, a little bit more realistic. So I think uh, I'm going to have to up the difficulty on stage recovery, up the uh, velocity at which these can enter in and still be safely recovered. Anyway, onward to the last of these ejection burns. This is the MOHO 2, clearly on its way to MOHO, again a vessel I have talked about in the past, so we'll just get over this really quickly, get it ready for its ejection burn, and uh-oh. Oh, something here doesn't look right. Let's zoom in on one of these landers here. 
it seems to be coming apart. <laughs> oh no, it seems to be exploding. Oh shoot, I got two of them. Is the one on the other side the same way? Oh yeah. Um, yeah, this is, I've had this happen before. This is connected to Infernal Robotics. And I think it has to do with a hinge that you can see right here. And then this decoupler. And I got the Oscar B right on the decoupler. Oh, I've had that same problem before. This doesn't get better. It only gets worse. Here, let's expand these out a bit. Oh, the other way. There we go. Okay. So, I mean, they're not glitched right into the main vessel. These are landers. I think the odds of them landing may be pretty slim. And when I had this happen to me before, this was in a previous campaign, it just kept getting worse. And this has got to go all the way to Moho. Oh, well, it could be interesting what these look like. <laughs> Whether I can use them for anything when I get to Moho, I don't know. We'll have to wait until then. But right now, well, I got to do this ejection burn. No option here. Other than the ugliness of those landers, though, this vessel performed admirably. No issues at all. It was set on a course on its way to Moho which we'll obviously have to visit in a future episode, but right now, well, my science scrounging efforts are going to continue. Taking off into the sunrise here, we have, well, Wilman, Wilman and Shellcow, because they are my only engineer and scientist on the surface, and our newest pilot, Burrick, who has freshly returned from his adventures being rescued at Minmis. And they are aboard a plane you may recognize as the Otter 4A, though it, ha it is, oh, the balance feels off. Yes, it is back in the center of lift, feels like it's ahead of the center of mass. Well, I seem to have control of it right now, so it seems to be okay. But anyway, back to the plane, what I have done is I have taken the Otter 4A, and I have kitted it out with all the science, including a couple of lockers full of the surface science pack stuff. And we're going to do a little bit of science scrounging, starting off with the biome I've been to the least of the Badlands. So I've got a waypoint set up as to where the nearest set of Badlands is. And we are on our way there to scrounge up as much science as we possibly can. Unfortunately, only three and a half minutes into its flight. Oh crap! Oh no, I've lost it! Okay, wait, 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 take off the time warp. Oh no, we're flying upside down and backwards. Okay, I, got, I gotta get myself under some control here. Oh, we are falling! Oh, okay, we're eight kilometers up, so that is a plus. At least we have some altitude. I got some time to get myself back in control. I'm trying to pitch it forward onto the prograde vector, but it will have none of that. Obviously the center of lift is way too far forward. Shoot! And, um, yeah, obviously I have to take some responsibility for this. <laughs> but, um, oh my gosh, come on, get, I gotta point down, down. But, uh, I do. F I have found that the space plane hangar at times. There we go. That's it on the prograde vector. Now what I need to do is slowly pull this up. No, no, no. I'm losing it again. Anyway, back to it. Um, the explanation. <laughs> Afterwards, I went back into the space plane hangar to find out what was up. And yeah, the center of lift was ahead of the center of mass. Though I know I'm 90% positive that it wasn't when I pushed this into the building queue and I have had issues in the space plane hangar with a plane I was testing previous to this one where it seemed like the center of mass and the center of lift indicators were off but uh, I guess I have to take some responsibility because after putting on it's really those lockers there are those lockers they're underneath the tail full of science equipment just sort of see it as it tumbles 
and it's those lockers that are pushing this pulling the center of mass too far backwards and I shouldn't have trusted the space plane hanger I should have tested it obviously though uh, yeah <laughs> now I got a situation here and Burke it's all up to our newest pilot Burke he's got to pull this up okay we're only half a kilometer from the water now come on come on we're in a flat spin bring this around I do not want to lose these purples okay 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 whoa, 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 whoa. level flight level flight level flight okay 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 oh god we're under 100 meters cut the throttle we gotta bring our speed down no 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 ah come on come on get it going the right way oh no there's no way I'm gonna hit I'm gonna hit ah oh my god oh my god my kerbals are still here my kerbals are still here Burke you are a star you saved everybody uh, mission aborted <laughs> anyway we will recover these folks and then I went back and I re uh, tweaked this plane pushed it back out in the building queue so we will try this again but why don't we get into our last mission I've got to sort of redeem myself after these couple of ugly failures okay this is map sat eight with a contract to do a high res altimetry scan around Minmus. Trivial. Lots of times I've done mapping satellites. Piece o cake. And we're away. And of course this being Minmus, I'm launching into a six degree incline. Oh what the hell? Oh come on. Okay maybe I can still save this if I can uh, cut these parachutes off. So there we go. Cut that one. And uh oh. Oh, 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 well, uh, in hindsight, I suppose that was entirely predictable. Let's cut these other ones. Oh my gosh, come on, come on. Oh, I can't get it. <laughs> oh, what does Scott Manley always say? Check yo staging. Oh my goodness. Come on, come on, I gotta get this. We are actually going down. We are going down, and uh, I am actually going down, perilously close to the runway, or to the launch pad. No, 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 I gotta stay away from the launch pad. Okay, forget, okay, forget the parachute. Just get this away from the launch pad. Away from the launch, away, 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 away. Oh no, and they just, they just ah! <laughs> Okay. Okay, I think everything is still here. All right. Okay, that could have gone worse, but it's time to go into the vehicle assembly building and do a little bit of a post-mortem on this embarrassment. Hang on here, the staging, the staging is fine. In fact, the parachutes aren't even up here till the top, so it wasn't a staging issue. Okay, the parachutes are actually deployed by smart parts. Let's check in on the smart parts here. All right, that one's for the fairing. What about the other one? That one, yeah, that, oh, no, <laughs> oh, okay, uh, yeah, it is deploying those parachutes, which is attached to action group one, at 65 meters, that is supposed to be 65 kilometers, at which point it arms the parachutes, so that this thing can later be recovered, <laughs> oh, my God, God. Oh, I really have to put more energy into testing, don't I? Stop being so cocky. Anyway, with that done and now fixed, we'll push this right back out into the building queue. We've got lots of other missions to be taking a look at in future episodes. But until then, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.